So just finishing up on a couple of the points that we were discussing when we were looking at this question yesterday. Um, you set up your plan and that is set up to the dimensions given in the question. We find our spectator, which was brought down here at an angle of 60 degrees and when you scale the measurement that was down 110 millimetres. We joined in the extreme corners of the plan into the spectator and again we bisect the angle of vision, draw in the bisector and the picture plane then is set up at 90 degrees to the bisector. We find our horizon line which we place just below the spectator and the distance specified in the question between the horizon and the ground line was three meters and when we scaled that that was a hundred millimeters to get our vanishing points again we look at the side of the plan here and from the spectator we bring a line up to the picture plane and we drop that down onto the horizon to locate vp1 and then parallel to the front of the plan we bring a line from the spectator onto the picture plane and drop it down onto the horizon line to get vp2 there's our two vanishing points found. And then we bring down this corner here at 90 degrees to the picture plane until it reaches the ground line. And that gives us the base of the pyramid. And we can join that then to VP1 and VP2 to get the base lines of the pyramid. You can see this corner coming in along this line and where it hits the picture plane, we drop that down and that's going to give us this far corner on the base of the pyramid. And likewise, we have this corner here coming into the spectator where it intersects the picture plane. We drop this down and that gives us this point here. So that gives us all the three points on the base of the pyramid. The next important point that would be necessary to obtain would be the apex of the pyramid. Now, in the question, we were told that that was um, 3.6 metres. So when we scale that, you end up with a height of 120 millimetres. Now this is the point of it here, but it's not on the picture plane, so we cannot measure a true height on that. So what we have to do is in the plane of the front face, and all of those lines on the front face are converging on VP2, we extend a line onto the picture plane, bring it down at 90 degrees, we measure up 120 millimeters along that line, and as that is in the plane of lines going to VP2, that line we bring back to VP2. Then, like getting all points, you bring that into your spectator. Once it hits the picture plane, you drop it down at 90 degrees. And where that intersects the line we've just drawn gives us the apex of the pyramid. And we can now draw the three corners up to the pyramid, giving us the basic shape of the pyramid. The next thing that we want to obtain are these two points here and these two points here to get this stripe going down the side of the pyramid. Now to do that, if we look at this here, looking at the question, we know that this line here is on the base, so it has a height of zero. The next line there is a height of 30 millimeters. This one has a height of 60 and this one has a height of 90. And this one here is a height of 120. These points here are halfway between 120 millimeters and 90 millimeters. So that means that those points there have a height of 105 millimeters. So again, we extend that line in the plane of those two points. We extend that onto the picture plane. You drop them down onto the ground line you measure up 105 millimeters to get that point there and you bring that back to VP2. And where that line intersects, that point there and that point there gives you the top two points on this stripe running up along the pyramid. To get these points at the bottom is done very simply by just joining that point and that point into the spectator where they intersect the picture plane dropping them down, and then you get the two points there on the base, connect them here to the two points on the top, 
and that will give you that stripe there along the side of the pyramid. Now, once you have that, that point there now has to go around the corner. So you use that point and that point then converges onto VP1. So you bring a line from there towards VP1 and this is going to give you the point that you need at the back. And then you have these two lines here, bring them into the spectator onto the picture plane drop them down onto the base of the pyramid and connect them to that point there and that point there, which will give you the stripe going down that face of the pyramid there. So once you have that done, that means then we just have to get these three different lines here. And again, that's done in a similar way. These are the lines we're looking for. And again, they're not on the picture plane. So you're going to have to bring them onto the picture plane. So you bring that line onto the picture plane and you bring this line onto the picture plane and this line onto the picture plane. Now this one here has a height of 30. This one has a height of 60 and this one has a height of 90. So once you bring those lines onto the picture plane, taking this first line, for example, and you bring that down to the ground line you measure up a height of 30 and you bring that back to VP2. And that will give you that line there on the face of the pyramid. Likewise, with the second line, you bring that onto the picture plane. We drop that down, measure up a height of 60 and bring that back to VP2. And that will give us this line here. And the final line is done exactly the same way. That has a height of 90. You bring that onto the picture plane, drop that down measure up your 90 millimeters and bring that back to VP2. That will give us these lines here on this side of the pyramid. Once you have those points established, all of these lines here will be converging on VP1. So once you have those three points, bring them over to VP1 and that will give you those lines there. And that then completes the pyramid itself. Now, finally, we were told we have a flag this flag out here that we have to draw. Now, first of all, where is the position of the flag? Well, in the question, we were told that the flag is up 20 millimeters from this edge of the plan, and it is on the continuation of the diagonal from the plan. So if you continue on that diagonal from the plan, measure up 20, draw a line, that will give you the position of the flag in plan. Now, we know that the flag from the question is 120 millimeters high. So in the same way of getting any other point, if you extend on a line here to the picture plane and you drop that down to the ground line and from here you measure up 120 millimeters, that will give you the top of the flag. The bottom of the flag was at 90, so there's the bottom of the flag. And in order to get that point, that point there is in the middle. so. The distance between those two points is 30, measure 15, and that will give you the middle there, which is going to be the point of the flag. So you ex to get the flag, you extend over that line, again, parallel to the edge of the plan, extend it over, drop it down onto the ground line, and measure up 90, 105, and 120 from the ground to get those points. And those points, will be brought back over to VP2. Now, in order also the ground line, you can extend over to VP2 to get the base of the flag. Now, in order to get the position of the flagpole itself, from the flag here in plan, you extend that into the pit, into the spectator. That would be brought into the spectator. And when it cuts the picture plane, you drop it down here, and then that will give you the position of the flag from the base here, which is coming from that line. And then the bottom of the flag will be there at 90, and the top of the flag will be there at 120. But we are told in the question that this line is rising at an angle of 30 degrees. So we have to obtain an auxiliary vanishing point for this line. Now the flag is flying in the same plane as the edge of the plan here. That was specified in the question that the flag is parallel to this. 
So the vanishing point, the auxiliary vanishing point, will be in relation to this line here, because this line that we use to get VP2 is running in the same direction that the flag is flying. So with that in mind, it's quite simple. We know that this edge on the flag is at an angle of 30 degrees. So there's the line that we brought parallel to our plan that located VP2 for us. Off that line, you mark an angle of 30 degrees, which is the edge that the flag is rising at. Extend that line out here at an angle of 30 degrees. And from the base of the line that you use to get VP2, we bring this line up here at a 90 degree angle to that baseline. So at 90 degrees off this baseline, we extend the line up to meet the line that we've drawn at 30 degrees. That establishes the distance from the picture plane here to this point here. That is our height, our height H. And you take that height and you mark it above VP2. And that gives you your auxiliary vanishing point. And once you have the auxiliary vanishing point, it's very simple to get that line there. Line up your set square with the auxiliary vanishing point and the top of the flag. And then extend that line down to get that edge of the flag. Now to find the point of it, that point is in the middle. So now you bring across your middle height there going across to um, VP2. That will give you this point here on the flag. And then once you have that point, you join it. There's the base of the flag there at a height of 90. As that comes over, you join that down there to get that point. And that completes the perspective of that question. So with those points on board, um, complete that question and have it in class with you for the next day.